Cy Turner, welcome to Downtime. Thanks for coming on. No problem. Thanks for having me. Cool. So, long, low, slack. Lots of talk about it in the industry at the moment. Forums are buzzing with it. We're here to have a chat, find out a bit about your views on long, low and slack, help people understand it a little bit more. We've got one of your bikes here as well so that we can talk through some of the characteristics and some of the dimensions we're talking about. But before we do that, tell us a little bit, a little bit about your, your journey into long, low and slack. Okay, so our bikes have always had a reasonable amount of space anyway, but we've always designed them around the kind of like the full sus bikes were always designed around like the sort of 50, 60 mil stem kind of region. Yeah. Like for instance, you know, Paul would ride a small with a 50 mil stem. I used to ride a large with a 60 mil stem. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and our hardtails were designed for something a touch longer, sort of 60, 70 mil. But that was yeah. the kind of thing because that was short stems five, six years ago yeah, kind of thing. Sense. Gave us good handling yeah. is what we thought. Um, so they were never crazy short or crazy steep. Yeah. Um, you know, like the first rocket came out in 2012 and if you put a 160 fork on it, the head angle was like 65 and a half degrees. So yeah, it was so never, done, so it's, yeah, yeah. which is pretty, you know, pretty progressive for the time, but yeah. you know, so they've never been like funny shaped in the way that some of the, some other, you know, sort of bikes have been over the last sort of five, six years. Yeah. But. Um, so a couple of things happened. First thing was um, I've been following with interest what Chris Porter had been doing at Geometron a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, and the catalyst for that was um, he came up and did a tech talk for A-Line Coaching, came up to Sheffield, right. um, had a chat about why he was doing what he was doing, and he brought one of his bikes. He brought one of the Geometrons from a couple of years ago. Um, and I know Chris, Chris reasonably well, so we had a bit of a chat afterwards. And I had a yeah. jump on the bike, and this was literally a spin round a tarmac car oh, right. park Full car in the park dark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the, the thing was is that it, looked, it felt like a bike. And this is the thing. I think I've been doing it. I've been doing this for a while. And, you know, the designing bikes thing. So yeah. um, I think sometimes you get a little, maybe get a little bit, sometimes you're worried to fail or you sort of get maybe a little bit sort of comfortable with, you know, my bikes work well and yeah. I'm quite happy with how I understand how this yeah. works. If and I kind broke, of, don't fix it. Yeah, yeah, kind of thing. I mean, I was all, you know, like, you know, for, you know, we were always doing little things that we saw as improvements, yeah. but, um, you know, like the 275 bikes were about 12 mil longer than the 26 bikes when they came out just to give that little, you know, because people were tending to put slightly, slightly shorter stems yeah. on it. Um, so anyway, so that was one of the, so I had a quick spin on the Geometron and one of the big things Chris said was that it was all about, um, it wasn't about massive reach necessarily, you know, like loads of space. It was about this little short stem, which gave this great handling, which I thought was interesting because I'd never thought about it in that kind of context. Yeah. And the other thing was, and it was a complete throwaway comment that I think you actually sent me a message about. Oh, right. So (laughs) Greg... Minar was interviewed on really long interview on Pink Bike around the same time, oh, yeah. and he was talking about the Honda days. Yeah. And there was, he was saying about how Honda said that like it was all about getting, could from their motorbike experience, it was all about getting the hand, the the handlebars behind the fork offset. Yeah, you know, behind the front wheel axle. Yeah, and obviously we, you know, even even on twenty nine er forks like. You know, you might you're just in the game on a 51 offset with a 50 mil stem, but yeah. you know, I was running 42 mil offset forks with the 60 mil stem kind of thing. You know, so it's like quite a difference from yeah. what they were talking. So just about. explain fork offset then for people that don't know the. Okay, so fork offset is part of the steering geometry. It's one of the things that gives you the feel on yeah. the bike. So the thing that actually one of the main things that gives you like the feel through the bars is something mm. called trail. Right. So if you drop a, so if you're looking at the bike sideways and you and you drop a line straight down from the axle to the floor, yeah. so the contact patch, yeah, and then you draw a line along the floor, yeah, away from the, you know, f- away from the bike, yeah, where a line through the centre of the head tube comes down, yeah, and, and hits the that. floor, yeah, that distance along the floor is called the trail, okay, um, and the more trail you have the more um 
the uh, you know it, it changes the feel of the uh, bike. The more trail yeah. you have, the heavier the steering is because okay. you've got more moment arm yeah. between the steering axis and the contact patch. Yeah, and you reduce the trail by increasing the fork offset, the offset. Right. So when you see these forks, like you know, people are talking about fork offsets again now as well because some people are shortening them and that in previously with 29ers came along they got long to try and reduce yeah. the trail again because of the bigger wheels so it's it's all bound Moving. up in yeah, that yeah. um i can probably send you a link to like a couple of articles that you okay. can like so we can add in, add yeah, in yeah. like so um anyway so fork offset on mountain bikes since once 27 and a half inch wheels came along is somewhere between 40 like 42 and 51 mil. Okay. So most forks these days for 27 and a half inch wheels are around 44, 46 mil offset. Yeah. Some 29, a lot of 29 forks are 51 mil offset. So, right. there's, so that's where your offset yeah. is. Yeah. So if you've got a stem that's like, you know, 50, 60, 70 mil long, yeah. your handlebars are in front of your steering axis. Mm -hmm. So once you actually get into thinking about this, well, that's one of the things that almost regardless of how slack your bike is, that's going to be one of the things that ultimately is going to give you that that tuck, that un, okay. you know that you know you yeah, go into you go to too collapse. hard and it comes yeah. out from underneath you. Your, your outside arm comes over the top, yeah, because where you're putting the load in is in front of the con, it's in front of the contact yeah. patch and it's yeah. in front of the front axle. Okay, so at some point you're because you've got a moment arm over, uh, across that distance yeah. you're going to be able to overcome that yeah. it, it's an extreme situation but yeah. you will it you will happen wheel, yeah you'll tuck the yeah. front wheel whereas if you get that stem behind the forks mm -hmm. so we're talking um i designed the bike around um oh initially i got the shortest stem i could i got like a 31 mil stem but I, they're, they're, they're basically designed around a 35 right. mil length stem um so the idea was take a bike um so i drew up a bike in november 2015 which was based on completely stock production rocket yeah. large and i made the longest bike i could with the reynolds down tubes that are available right um in fact, it was even longer than that because I think at the time they were only making 740 down tubes. Yeah. And I was like, if you just leave it on the machine, how, how long, long will we you get? I think we ended up like at like 758 or something oh, right, like that. They just run it right off yeah. the end of the machine. Um, and I was doing a little bit of work with um, Shand mm -hmm. Cycles uh, yeah. at the time. Um, so... I said, you know, if I supply you a tube set, can you make me a front end? Yeah. Um, and as it happened, um, they were a little bit light going into that December. So they, I think I delivered them the drawing on the 4th of December and it turned up on the 20th. Nice. It was like... It's a good Christmas present. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so basically that bike was the longest bike I could make. Yeah. Um, based And I tweaked the head angle so that with an angle, with a one degree angle set in backwards, yeah. it had the same head angle as the current bike. Okay. So the only thing I changed yeah. was the length of the bike. Yeah. There was a setup where all of this is the same apart from the length of the bike and the fact that I've got this tiny stem on mm -hmm. it. Now, at the time, I was riding production large with a 60 mil stem. So even with the tiny stem on it, I'd given myself something like... 50 mil more okay. space yeah so a big change yeah so given that most size jumps are between like 17 and 25 mil per size you know yeah. even even being generous yeah. i'd effectively made the bike two sizes longer mm -hmm. um and i went and did the first ride i rattle canned it in horrible white outside my garage <laughs> and stealth yeah, yeah. <laughs> and built up a back end onto it and built up the bike and I went up to one of our local, I just did my local ride, my yeah. local like two hour loop. Um, and the climbing was fine. And it was actually really nice because actually I could slide my saddle a bit further forward because I had okay. all of this space. So yeah. actually I was a little bit more in the middle of the bike. Yeah. So that was quite, that was first kind of, oh, you know, this is comfortable yeah, and I've got a bit more space. Yeah. Um, 
and then um, one of the the um, I went and rode uh, Blue Steel, which is the crowdfunded trail yeah. up in up at Lady Canning's in fantastic Sheffield. Trail. Yeah, yeah, fantastic trail. And it's like a bobsleigh, right? It's like low. It's it's a blue flow trail, but loads of berms, and it's like the faster you go, the harder it is. It's yeah. just brilliantly built in that respect. And uh, I've never been the best berm rider, right? So I was getting better because I now had this trail on my local loop, but. I just remember riding down this trail and it was properly one of those light bulb moments because despite the fact that the bike was much longer than I was normally riding yeah. and they're quite tight burns, I was riding it with way more confidence and it was all down to the fact that it felt like my hands were pressing through the contact patch. Interesting. I just, sh- I just was shoving the front end into these yeah. corners and there was such a feeling of security you know, like I said, I never got that feeling that the bike was doing, I was fighting the bike doing this. Yeah. You just shoved the front end in and it just stayed there. And I thought, and it was so confidence inspiring. And I thought, this is interesting. Uh-huh. So, yeah, so that bike was 507 mil reach. Right. So that's just a touch shorter than what our new, our, our, the new long shot XLs are. Right. Because okay. Reynolds have actually started making longer yeah. down tubes. <laughs> nice. Um, so yes, yeah, so that was the start of the story, really, yeah. and and it was all down to the uh, so. And at that point, I haven't even I hadn't even made it lower or slacker. No, all I'd done longer. was made it longer, and the and the length was purely to kind of compensate for the short stem. stem. Yeah, right. I mean, I'd given myself more space because I was potentially riding a bike that was a little bit on the small side for me. Right, but that was also that kind of old school thinking that was sort of playing on my mind is i always want even as a tall guy xl frames used to be like gates yeah, so yeah. i always rode a large with a slightly longer stem yeah to get so i could chuck it around it was that kind of short kind of chuck it around kind of idea but that was that's quite old thinking now really so yeah. um so yes yeah, so like i say this bike was it, i had loads more room felt really comfortable yeah. i had this incredible feeling but like i say Head angle was exactly the same. BB was exactly the same. Rear yeah. end was exactly the same. In fact, you know, people have said about the previous generation rocket bikes is that the BB was like really qu- on, quite on the high side for, for what it was. I mean, yeah. it was a 350 BB. It was only mi- minus five. Yeah. It's not a lot for compared to where a lot of these bikes are these days. Right. So it wasn't really about that yeah to start with it was trying well to start with it was just reducing the variables yeah so <laughs> in your in your opinion then we're not bikes getting longer is not necessarily what's making the difference the shorter stem to match or to come underneath the fork offset is what's driving that's the improved the key. handling that's the key and you kind of have to i guess you have to go longer to keep the the person in the right place yeah. on the bike with the short stem right exactly that exactly that so um so there's a couple of other things going on and this is where i started but what it did was is that it really opened my mind it got me challenging all of my preconceptions right like it got me making me look at the whole bike as a system again and say right well how does this how does this all work together yeah um so because yeah like i said i'd always thought I, i liked reasonably slack not like mega slack yeah. but like reasonably relaxed seat angles uh-huh. because i'd come from bikes which were possibly a bit too small for me and back in the day you always had a layback seat post on your bike yeah it was, it was just what i was used to and it gave me the length in the bike but obviously now with with inline seat posts because that's what most droppers are yeah that sort of takes you a bit takes a bit of space away yeah um and we did compensate that for that a little bit in the in the previous generation geometry um but actually what i realized is actually no it's when you've got all the room in front of you and you can tip it forward a bit actually that's that plants you in the middle of the bike and that's so that's good so so i just started knocking over some of these some of this baggage yeah yeah. um you know because it does happen you know you've been doing this for 12 years and you've actually been reasonably successful at designing bikes and and you know, and got some really good feedback on your product. You think, oh, I've got a system that works here. You know, yeah, kind it's of hard thing. To look beyond that, and yeah, see exactly, the change, yeah. right? Yeah, definitely. So, um, so yeah, so that that bike then morphed into 
um, one of the options I had because of the way the rear end was built on that bike is that I could put the prototype 29er rear end onto it. Right. So I could go from a 335, a 435 rear end to yeah. a 450 rear end. Okay. So I so could again, try, so I, so, so I can try out yeah. how does that change things. Yeah. Um, I could go, I could cycle through by going for cycle through head angle changes. Mm -hmm. So, um, so in the spirit of this challenge in my preconceptions, the next thing I did, so obviously that first bike was completely standard, just yeah. longer. Yeah. Then I went full geometron. Right. So I stuck with 29, a back end on it. I put a two degree angle set in it. So I think the head angle ended up in the, I think I measured it at 63.1. Right. So something like slack. that so yeah. really so pretty slack yeah um and obviously much longer wheelbase and it and and you felt so in the middle of the bike it felt so planted but the interesting thing was is that the ride i actually did um with that was with Che and swinney on the um uh, who are my team riders yeah and we went and rode at mac forest around went around Che's way and there's some disc disgustingly <laughs> steep slippy loamy kind of downhill yeah. like stuff and you think well this is where this is going to be mega yeah super stable super, super stable yeah. like you know loads of confidence in the yeah. front end but it didn't work right it was it was too much for me okay. for my from you know for because obviously this is all about I try not to be too dogmatic about things. This is my opinion on bike design. Yeah, I yeah. know Chris goes even longer, and I know yeah. some people want slightly shorter and, and steeper because they like a certain level of interaction with their bikes. I'm not saying right and wrong. I'm just explaining to you what my experience was. Fair, so, yeah. um, so you're going down these super steep, and you just and you want that feeling of the front end pinning in. But the f problem was is that it was so slack and it was so far away that I couldn't get enough weight on the front wheel. Right. So, so it wasn't tucking. Yeah. So I wasn't falling off, but it was, it was understeering. Pushing, it was just pushing. Yeah, yeah. You know, so there was no. So I didn't fall off all day, yeah. but I didn't actually get the bike going where I wanted it to for most of it either. Right. So. Because you're too stretched out, too way, far. It was away. way too yeah. far, I, and and, I, and on steep terrain, I gave it another couple of rides to see whether I could change my riding style. Because it, it felt like if you could in if you could commit more load to it, yeah. it would take it. But I just couldn't. It didn't feel. It felt too challenging to my riding style. Yeah. You know, I'm willing to have a go. You know, I've had coaching over the last like two or three years to try and improve my riding style and try and improve my the way I do things. Yeah. But I do think it also has to come back to how it's got to feel it's, it's got to feel vaguely connected to what you're used to doing. It's For got sure. to feel slightly intuitive. Otherwise it's going to take so long to learn how to ride relearn how to ride the bike. Yeah. It's going to you're just going to get yeah. bored, or and, and a lot of people are not going a lot of people to be willing like, to put no, that exactly, time in, yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. So to me, it wasn't. I couldn't commit on steep terrain. I couldn't get my weight far enough forward to feel and feel comfortable to make yeah. it work. Okay. So now we've got to right. Okay, so that's too much. Yeah. So now you start bringing it yeah. back in, um, and a couple of months later. Um, we did a test day at Revolution Bike Park with the team because um, Swinney had just joined the team. We just got the bikes together mm -hmm. and we thought, let's, you know, let's do a test day. So we went to Revolution in February in the snow and ice. Um, and I was really scared of Revolution. Yeah, no way. It's, I didn't, it's I didn't a didn't place to ride, right? <laughs> but JP from A-Line said, no, come, it'll be fine. You know, it's not all massive jumps. There's some technical yeah. stuff you'll love it so anyway i was riding this bike and by this point i was back on regular rear end mm -hmm. and i just got a straight headset in it so 64 and a half degree yeah. head angle um and it just felt amazing in the steep technical terrain i could just stuff it straight into these corners straight down these drops and it just felt amazing yeah and and it was all about confidence it was just it was confidence inspiring it made me a better rider because it made me less scared perfect it's like yeah. that and that and that was the key for me yeah. that was the key that was the point at which i thought right we've got to start looking at this for everything because this isn't about this isn't about people riding at mac 
three with their hair yeah. on fire. Um, it allows amazing riders to do that, but what? But that's because it's confidence inspiring, and yeah. that's not just for aggressive riders or yeah. incredible riders. That's actually brilliant for everyone. Um, so that was like my real, like the, uh-huh, the, 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 this yeah. is you know I'd had a couple of light bulb moments with this, as I've said, but that was the point at which I thought, right, I've got to now look at researching this for all all of the bikes. Yeah. Yeah. This isn't just for full on enduro bikes or whatever. This is this works. Th- this is yeah. a, this is a new this is a new better way of doing things. Yeah. Cool. And it, I mean, people will talk about downsides. So some people say, well, they don't climb or they're too long to get around tight stuff. What are your thoughts on that? Because from what you're saying, you've not really felt you know the compromise side of where you've gone with the geometry, right? No. No. I mean. Th- Obviously, I haven't tested it absolutely everywhere, but I've tested it in quite a few places. Yeah. Um, from a climbing point of view, they're, I think they're better. Right. Because the whole hangover of a short rear end being better for climbing is from when bikes were tiny short. Yeah. So that was about keeping you in the middle of the bike when front ends were super, super short. Yeah. So if you make front ends really long... Yeah. You need to grow the rear ends to balance you about back in the middle of the bike. Yeah. And again, having and actually sizing sizing the space up properly for bigger riders yeah. means that you can run the saddle a little bit for you know, I always used to run my saddle jammed all the way back. I now run it kind of in the middle of the rail. So that's right. that's effective that's effectively yeah. like a degree steeper on my seat on my effective seat angle. Yeah. Um you know, the best the best climbing bike that I think we make for technical terrain is the Rocket Max, which right. is the 450 mil chain, well, 448 mil chain stay, 29er enduro bike. You know, and I'm not talking about like chugging up a fire road or something like that. It'll be slower than a lightweight XC bike up yeah. there. I'm talking about scrambling up something really steep and difficult. That bike just sticks to the floor. And it motors up, and actually with plus wheels in it, they're <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, you know. So it's so so. I don't I don't buy the climbing thing at all. Okay. Um, the length thing is interesting. Now I've had a couple of people say, "Oh, what about really steep switchbacks going uphill?" Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, for those kind of things, that's just a timing thing. Right. You need to swing her out. Yeah. get around yeah um it just takes a bit of practice but it's not impossible uh-huh. but actually going i mean i'm not ridden s- crazy alpine switchbacks where i know right. there can be a bit of a handful but um but i remember again this was it took me a long time to get the geometry working on the 29er um because i've been developing the rocket max version now mm-hmm. um for some reason that took a lot longer to get right uh, and I, it took me a while to figure out why, but the final prototype that I got of that was um, was interesting because I was over at Warncliffe. It was yeah, we, I think I think we were right. Was I riding with you? I was riding. Don't know. I can't remember. We were over at Warncliffe and we were riding some of the clay spade stuff, yeah. and we found some stuff which doesn't have massive jumps in it, which was good. It but, probably was me then. But it was, <laughs> <laughs> but at the top. It was at the top. There was some quite steep, like tight, sculpted yeah. berms, and I remember. And I'd only had the bike about a week, and I didn't know this trail. And I remembered whipping round this berm, yeah, and it just went round. And I think what it is is it's the, the same thing that makes the climbing good is what makes the bike not feel too long when you're um, when you when you're doing steep turns. Uh-huh. It's because the like if you think like a bike turns and there's 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 a vertical axis there somewhere. Yeah. I think what happens is with the long bike, if you've got the long back end to match and you're st- and because of the length you're stood up in the middle of the bike instead of being pushed yeah. back off the because that's that's the other thing, is you know, with enough length in the bike you stand up in the middle instead of automatically pushing you pushing yourself off the bars because your legs and arms are fixed length kind of thing um your your center of gravity 
is roughly on the turning axis of the bike. Uh -huh. So when the bike turns, it does, you're, you're kind of it the pivot, in the, it you. moves yeah. around you. You're like the pivot in the middle. Yeah. And I think that's why some of these bikes, which have gone super long, well, not even super long, but longer bikes, but have kept the super short back end is why they feel a bit odd. Right. Because that's going to put that turning axis like in front of you. Yeah. So, so it's going to have that kind uh, of okay. yeah, yeah. wheel, you know, that sort of shopping trolley. Yeah, yeah. Shopping trolley is a horrible way to, because like, they're not bad it's like bikes. Bar, it's like a barge at that but, point. But yeah, right? but, but it's like, move something from the back. It's all, it, it's all in front yeah. of you. Yeah, yeah. Because that, axis is in front of your center of gravity so okay so that so so actually even though like with the 160 forks on it i think like my my rocket max prototype's got a 1350 wheelbase right. i mean it's, it doesn't fit in my bike bag anymore it's just <laughs> it is very very long yeah it doesn't feel it doesn't feel long to yeah, me it feel cumbersome on the trail um so so yes yeah, so that's so that's where that's that's what I say about those those two things. Yeah. Um, and even if there are a couple of com a couple of places where they're compromised compared to other bikes, yeah. I just think that the the advantages for the vast majority of riding that people do are so marked. Like I say, that confidence that you feel um, is just amazing. It just makes you feel so secure on the bike, which means you have more fun because you. You're not terrified riding down these yeah. trails, and I mean, when I was riding at the Golfy last summer, I'd never ridden at the golf golf uh, the, the golf course trails up yeah. in Elethan, where they, you know, they there's some crazy steep, it's pretty steep up there, yeah. stuff. But it's got this incredible uh, traction in the dirt, like the dirt's got kind of rock mixed in with it. So yeah. even when it's a bit sloppy, it's kind of you're getting all of this feedback that you've got loads of grip. Yeah. So that gives you confidence. But I remember riding down. Like my favorite trail up there now is one called Repeat Offender. And it's really steep and technical, but there's a couple of bits where you're coming in quite steep and there's a little, you can see like a route yeah. and then you can't see on the other side. And on my first run down it, I was almost rolling to a halt. Right. Until I could see Hearing what was coming. Over, yeah. And then you let go and you go. Yeah. And I net, and it, it didn't feel topply. It didn't. It just felt secure. It just yeah. felt right. I've, I'm, I'm completely in control of this. I've got this. I'm just going to slow it down. Yeah. I've, yeah. That's all right. And I'm going. It's confidence. Yeah. It just gives you so much confidence. And do you think? I mean, you you're quite a tall rider. Yeah. I'm not. Um, does it work for everyone? In, you know, everyone riding wise, you're saying, but everyone kind of height wise as well. Is it applicable across the size range? Well, yeah. Well, this is the, this is the thing that I was always. Um, this is the thing that I did a lot of work on after after I'd had the the kind of we need to do this for everything moment. Yeah. Well, the next thing we got made was a cut and shut um, prototype of our sole twenty seven and a half inch hardtail. Yeah. Which is us kind of XC, lightweight XC trail steel hardtail. Mm -hmm. And Paul, who works here, is five foot eight and is at the top end of the small size. Right. Always, always ridden the small. He rides, he rode a small sole with a 60 mil stem. Absolutely fine. Now, we tried a couple of options. Yeah. And he, we tried a couple of things where he rode um, bigger sized current bikes with short stems to see. Yeah. Roughly, you know, he wrote, we built him up like a large rocket with a 35 mil stem. So even though the standover was no good, it yeah. was like lengthwise, he could like see what was going on. Um, and what we ultimately came down to was um, for shorter people, we actually had our sizing about right. Okay. It was it, for taller guys like me, I'll definitely hold my hands up and say, like, you know, three or four years ago, we were probably making bikes too short, or right. certainly not offering an XL size was was not doing people my yeah. size a favour. But yeah. hand on heart, at the time I was riding a production large with a sixty mil stem and absolutely loving it. Yeah. So Chase, who races for me, has been for the last three years, rides a production large with a fifty mil stem on it, absolutely loves it. You know, so Sweet. we're. It wasn't that I was mis-selling the bikes; it no. was just that where I was at at the time, that's what I felt was appropriate and. Yeah. I, you know, through experimentation, I've found that I've found something better. Yeah. What we wanted to do was see whether that was applicable to, um, to some of the shorter guys. And yeah. So, 
um, what we found was is that the small, the previous generation small sizing with a 50 or 60 mil stem, that bar to BB distance yeah. was pretty much appropriate okay. for people around, you know, sort of five, six to five, eight. Yeah. Um, they didn't want or need any more space right. on the bike. But what we wanted to do was get them off that 50 or 60 mil stem yeah. and get a 35 mil stem in there. So, so we chopped a front end off um, an old, an old sole mm -hmm. and we had a new front end welded on, yeah. which was just, so instead of being, what is it? My long shot prototype was 60 mil longer than the bike I was previous riding. Yeah. Um, this was just, uh, 20, just, oh yeah, 25 mil longer. Okay. Yeah. So literally the difference between a 60 mil stem and a 35 mil yeah. stem, that's it. Um, and again, we did the trick with the angle sets. Yeah. The interesting thing there is, is that's where we learned about how slack comes into this equation. Okay. And you don't necessarily find it on the enduro bikes because they're already pretty slack. Yeah. But again, we started with everything the same as current bike, except longer with a short stem. Yeah. And short stems, what they do is they give the steering more, they make the steering more responsive because they give you more leverage over the... Okay over the um over the steering yeah so they make the steering more responsive but the previous generation sole was obviously designed around 50 60 70 mil stems yeah um it had a 69 degree head angle at, at ride height right and paul persevered with it for a couple of months and he was, i just I don't know what you're going on with this this short stem <laughs> hand list that this is this is my old bike's better i can't stick this to the floor this right. is no good oh, what's going on here then this should be awesome like what's okay so well let's well let's just see we'll just we'll flip the we'll flip the angle set yeah so it went just a uh, stroke 69 to 67 degree head angle yeah uh and again it was like it was one weekend you know we did it on the thursday came back in on the monday that's pretty brilliant absolutely <laughs> you know so and so so what we found was, and we and we went a little bit further again, right. which is what informed what we're doing with the beefy. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, for the sole, what we found was is that sixty-seven was the absolute slack, steepest we could have it uh -huh. with the thirty-five mil stem and not have the handling too nervous because yeah, that's the yeah. other side of it. Yeah. Thirty-five mil stem gives you super responsive steering. So if you've also got a super responsive head angle, it just gets too much. Yeah. It's just too nervous. Uh -huh. So you lose that confidence all of a sudden. Um, so what we did with the sole, because we still want that to be, you know, that's like the single track kind of scalpel kind of bike. Yeah. We, we settled with that 67 degree head angle for the heart, for that hardtail, because right. like I say, that is the, that was, that was the steepest we could go. Yeah and make the handling feel really good and get those benefits, but it's still super, super responsive yeah, bike. Yeah, precise bike. Yeah, so yeah. even though it's much longer than the previous version, yeah. certainly in the medium and large sizes as, as the size steps um, grow, um, it's it's just so much more confidence. You've got that confidence inspiring stuff, but it's yeah. still got that little, like, you know, you can just like, you know, from the wrists kind of thing. Nice. Um, and so, so yeah, that was interesting. Going coming at it from completely the opposite end, we realised oh, it is, you know, and this is where it starts working as a whole. You realise that it's all working as a system. Yeah. You've got to play the head angle off against the stem, against the length of the bike. Yeah, against... nothing works on its own. No, kind of without being, you know, yeah, yeah. linked to all the other variables, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So. So what we ended up with is we've actually ended up with a broader sizing system. So yes, the small is longer than the previous generation small, but only far enough. Uh, but actually, if, like I say, if you measured the bar to BB distance yeah. of a conventionally set up previous generation bike right. and a new bike, it will be within millimeters. Right. Whereas if you measure, you know, just taking the sole as an example, like the large, we don't make the X, an XL in that 
that particular size any, uh, at the moment, but the previous generation large with a 70 mil stem and the new one with a 35 mil stem, it will be probably, you know, it'd be the best part of, you know, 35, 40 mil longer. Right. Um, and obviously the medium kind of falls somewhere in the middle yeah. there with, so the sizing steps are bigger. So you kind of, the range stretches more as you get towards the top yeah. end from where you were. Anyway, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so small is about the same. Yeah. Medium, you're, you know, you, if you're currently on a medium cotic, we'd recommend you go to a new medium with a right. 35 mil stem, but you'll have a little bit more space. Okay. Large, you'll probably find quite a bit more roomy. Yeah. And then XL, you'll find quite a lot more roomy yeah. but it will really suit you for that person yeah, yeah. for that height rider um okay and then what we've done with the rest of the with the rest of it is we've dropped the we've, we've dropped the um seat tube heights and jumps in seat tube between the sizes so okay. that if you do feel you want to go with something a little bit shorter yeah or longer you yeah. know um, obviously it doesn't work at the extreme ends of the range, but if you're kind of in the middle yeah. with, you know, with the, with the range of like dropper seat post lengths that you can get now, um, you know, there's, there's still a little bit of flexibility. Yeah. So for a lot of people, they might be able to, to pick either a medium yeah. or a large kind of thing. Yeah. Or, depending, depending on, on how where, they, how they, yeah, find how, they how they feel they want to. Cool. Um, and obviously, like I say, we, we haven't excuse me we haven't ended up going crazy slack on on these bikes so they will still suit a more conventional approach yeah if that's just if that's your thing like i say we we think it's better with the 35 mil stems and we absolutely like hope you'll try it and love it yeah but you know if you're just if you just like the way bikes handle just a little bit more conventionally then that's cool. Yeah. Just go go down a size, stick a 45, 50 mil stem on it. Away you go. It's not going to be completely, you know, it's, it's not suddenly going to make you fall off on every corner. Yeah. It will just respond a little bit more what you're used to. Yeah. Cool. Good stuff. So you guys have got a pretty novel approach to demo as well. If people want to get their hands on one and, and try this new geometry out, right? Yeah. Tell us a bit about how they, how they can go about that. Yeah. So this was one of the reasons why I felt a bit more emboldened with the new geometry because for the last two years we've had um a sam the demo man mm -hmm. out on tour um in our big black transit yeah black betty um and basically uh we take the demo to customers right so we do open demos at places where uh, we go around the country to forestry car parks and local yeah. trailheads and things like that and you can either book a bike to at a certain time or if you're just in the area just pitch up and see cool. what's available and yeah. we'll try and fit you in or and the other thing that we do is um we do what we call exclusive rides mm -hmm. so if you and three or four of your mates or more yeah you know, if you've got a club so much the better yeah um want to try out the bikes on your local trails get in touch and we will try and work that into our schedule. So oh, nice. we'll come out for half a day with you, you know, a couple of hours, you'll get set yeah. up on the bikes. Um, you know, it normally takes us a couple of months to, to work these into the schedule because yeah. obviously we're busy with Pretty it. Busy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's, um, so yeah, so we, so certainly in the UK, we can, we, you know, if you want to have a go, Sweet. get in touch and we'll, yeah. we'll try and sort it out. And obviously during the week, kind of, you know, we're based right in the middle of the Peak District. We've got a demo loop on our doorstep. Yeah. So if you want to get in touch and you can get to, you know, get half a day off work on a, yeah. on a Wednesday, you know, come down come and have a go. A ride. Sweet. Good stuff. And for people that live outside the UK, you've got a website, you ship in worldwide now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we ship anywhere in the world, yeah. direct to the world from the Peak District. <laughs> nice. Um, most you know frames anywhere in the world we're beginning to do bikes outside the uk uh depending on the logistics and right. getting uh the thing about shipping bikes around the place is that they're, there's you ship quite a lot of air with them and they charge just as much for air as they do for yeah, anything no else yeah. <laughs> um so it can get a bit expensive but we're we're willing to work with you okay. um uh, so yeah there's there's lots of options like that um we do a um uh, we do a 30 day, um, love it or send it back. Okay. Nice. So if you buy it yeah. and you have a go and you ride it for a 
two or three weeks and you're yeah. just not getting on with it, send it back, give you your money back. And you do look very cool. Well, it's we stand behind the product. Yeah, it's good. Um, and obviously the thing about not being able to try it is it's not an insignificant amount of money, even if you're just buying a frame. And obviously yeah. distance selling from, you know, if you're in the US... Or if you're in, uh, you know, if you're in, uh, you know, Southeast Asia and you're buying a frame off us, then, you know, you can't, you know, uh, you can't uh, necessarily even have a chat to us because yeah, of time yeah, differences. Yeah. So we recognise it's a big commitment. So we want to back that up with being committed to our products. Cool, it's good. I like it. And where can people find you on the internet? Um, so it's uh, www.cotic.co.uk. Yeah, that's the website. Um, and uh, yeah, all the information's on there. As well, as much information as we can cram on it is on there. Yeah. Um, if it's not on there, or if there's something you want to ask, just drop us an email. Give us a ring. Cool. And on social, uh, at Cotic Bikes on Instagram. Uh, just search Cotic on Facebook. You'll yeah. find us uh, at Cotic Ltd on Twitter. All righty. Um, yeah, you can tell I've not used that. For a bit. <laughs> um, somebody monitors that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, yeah, we're we're about the place. We've yeah. got a flick, you know, there's loads of pretty pictures on our Flickr page. So, yeah. yeah. Nice one. Cool. Thanks a lot, Si. It's been super interesting. Yeah, thanks. And, uh, yeah, look forward to getting out for a ride on one of these things. Yeah, definitely. Nice one. Cheers. Cheers, man. Well, that's it for our first video podcast episode. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get all of our upcoming videos. And head to downtimepodcast.com to listen to all of our episodes with riders like Aaron Gwynn, Tani Seagrave, Greg Minar, Phil Atwell, and many, many more. This episode was sponsored by Cotic Bikes. Our sponsor content is only with the best guests who we think will be interesting to you. And this sponsorship helps us to keep bringing you the best content for free. So until next time, get out and ride.